Hey guys, it's Christopher and welcome to another Solaris tutorial. Today we will um, make another item. We will uh, program the rupees so to give some money to the player. For now, um, in my current quest, oops, no, this doesn't exist yet. <laughs> I have hearts, shield, and sword. Um, in future versions of the Solaris A Link to the Past pack, there will be more items and probably including the rupees. But even if you already have them, um, it's still interesting to understand how the, the scripting, the items scripting works. So I will show, show you how to make rupees. Okay, so when you make an item, remember that you also have two additional things to do. You have to put um, a sprite here, more exactly an animation in the sprite entities slash items. The animation should have the name of your item and should have um, as many directions as the, the, the item can have um, variants. So we'll make rupees with three variants in this episode green rupees, blue rupees and red rupees. Um, we even have animations for more but I won't use these in this episode. You can you can use them if you want. Um, it will be very easy once you understand how to make these. And the second thing to do is to add a dialogue here exactly three dialogues underscore treasure dot the name of your item dot the variant so variant one is the, gr the green rupee you found a rupee variant two is the blue rupee you found a blue blue rupee it's worth 5 rupees and the red rupee 20 okay so i guess you understand you, you understand how to make the the other ones if you if you want 50 100 and 300 um okay so and let's create our item here. Rupee. Um, and since my item will have three variants, I like to explain to detail all three variants in the description here. So, one, five, twenty. Okay, so this is the default script created. Um, you can check the documentation of the item type here. Lua API refer reference equipment items. And everything is explained here. Actually, there is a very simple exa example of rupee script here. But this one only has one variant. Um, Okay, let's try to put some rupees here. Um, destructible object treasure, rupee, green rupee here, and maybe, oops, sprite, vase. Anyway, um, okay. Oops. And this one with a uh, blue rupee, so variant two here. And maybe also a treasure chest with 20. This one will be saved. 
So this map is called separators, so if I save the state of this chest somewhere, I want to make it um, different from any other. So why not pref why not use the map name as prefix here? Separators rupee chest. Okay. I can try this. Uh okay, it's not the correct map. Let's start on map separators. You found a red rupee, it was 20 rupees. So I haven't made any particular scripting here. So it's an item that has no effect for now. But I was still able to see the sprite because it does exist and the dialogue. If you forget them, you will have error messages to help you. And here is the green rupee. And this time it's a bit weird to have the dialogue here. And the blue rupee. And what's also weird is the sprite of the shadow here. It's too big by default. So let's see how to customize this. How to fix these true problems. You have a lot of function he functions here to customize a lot of things. For example, set shadow, and here you can put the name of an animation in this sprite, entities slash shadow. So let's go see the shadow sprite. In the Zelda Link to the Past resource pack, you have two animations, big and small. So maybe you want to use small for rupees. Um, so in our script, the correct place to do this is in on started here. This is called when the game starts, not when a rupee appears. When a pickable rupee appears, it's this one, and you have the pickable here. So it's different. The I the item here represents. Um, the concept of rupees in general for your game. So this is called when the game starts. But this is called when a pickable rupee entity is created on the map. So for example when uh, when a, a, a vase is destroyed here or when an enemy drops a rupee. And this is called when you use the item so it won't it will never happen for rupees because rupees cannot be stored in the inventory and cannot be used like i don't know the bow or the the boomerang so we can remove this and actually we can also remove this because we don't want to do anything special when a pickable rupee appears it's when the player obtains a rupee that we will do something. But first, we wanted to fix the shadow and put a small animation. So again, this is the name of an animation in this sprite entity's shadow. As explained in the documentation here. And the second problem we had is that we didn't want to brandish the treasure and to have a dialogue when a pickable rupee is obtained. We still want to brandish and to have the dialogue when you get a rupee from a, a treasure chest, but not when you pick a rupee on the floor. So this is possible with set brandish when picked here. So in unstarted we this is a place to customize all general properties of your item. Okay, so is it better here? 
the shadow is, is better. And when I pick the rupee, well, it's not the correct sound. We want the, the rupee sound instead. And also I forgot to put a sound here when destroying the vase. Stone. Even though it's not the the topic of this tutorial. Okay, so now we want to customize the sound of picking a rupee. Set sound when picked. And the sound will be picked rupee here. The default sound is picked item, but here we change it. Picked rupee, it's another sound that you have in the resource pack. Um, Okay, and the last thing we want to customize is that we would like pickable rupees to disappear after some time when they are uh, created here by a destructible object or by an enemy. This is not always the case, for example, for small keys, you don't want small keys to disappear. So there is also a function for that. It's set can disappear. And if, if yes, it will disappear after a few seconds. So it can disappear true. So if I don't take this one, <laughs> but this one. Okay, it's blinking and now it disappeared. And this one is still brandished because it comes from a treasure chest. Okay, and finally, let's get to the <laughs> the main stuff, the actual code of rupees. Um, there is an event here. There are a lot of events and items, but the one we want is on obtaining or on obtained. There is a slight difference between these, and this difference makes sense, I mean, is relevant only when the item is brandished, for example, when you have it from a chest on obtaining is called right away, before this dialogue starts, and on obtained is called after the dialogue is finished. So for rupees, we want them to take effect before the dialogue starts. For some other item, you wouldn't want that, but for example, um, in your tunic item, if the player obtains the blue tunic, the blue mail, um, you would want the, the hero to brandish the blue tunic, but still wearing the the, uh, the green one. Okay, so I don't have tunics items here, but if you check my games, I'm pretty sure that. For tunic scripts, I defined at some point item on obtained and not on obtaining. But okay, for this one, for this example, we want on obtaining with two parameters variant and save game variable. So the variant will be one, two, or three. And the save game variable will be um, will be nil for this one, because it's not saved, same for this one, and will be this string here for this one. But actually we, we will just ignore this parameter. And what we want to do is to add some money to the player. So there is a built-in money counter in the engine, you can use it if you want. It's the simplest way. Uh, game is a variable defined here. And how much money? Well, it depends on the variant. So you can use if then else, or the more ele elegant way is probably to make a table with all three possible values, one, five, 
20. So this is a, a Lua array. Um, arrays are indexed starting with 1 usually. So if variant is 1, you will have this value. Let's write it. If variant is 2, you will have this value. And variant 3, you will have this value. So it will be correct. OK. And this should be enough. The only slight problem is that uh, the maximum of money is zero by default. So still no effect. In your initial game script, you want to set some some max ma some maximum uh, money initially. For example, hundred rupee, one hundred rupees. Notice that the counter was green before because green means maximum. And now it works. So the HUD script of, of the rupee displayer here makes um, r makes the value increase gradually. But it's just for the displaying. The actual value stored is uh, updated only once here directly to the correct value. Which means that if you take I don't know twenty rupees and, and you save very quickly before the the counter is completely updated here, it, it won't be a problem at all. It's just for displaying. And actually we have the same system for hearts. Okay. So this is how to make uh, a very simple rupee item script. The actual scripts in my games are, n are not more complicated than that, actually, for rupees. But they, my games have something more. They have a rupee bag item uh, to change the maximum number of rupees. So the idea is to make another item called rupee bag whose effect when you obtain them is to change the maximum money. So we call set max money here. You can check these these items in my games. It's always useful to to see how they are designed. But um okay. I think I've covered what I wanted in this episode. If you have any question, feel free to ask. I hope you enjoyed it and see you next time. Bye.